guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber from Saka Jane Cosplay and today we are back and guys with Jujutsu Kaisen Ah oh, shit, I forgot Ah, like <laughs> episode this Episode 17 <laughs> Uh, yes, last episode was about Panda and uh, Mekamaru. Yep. We got to see both of their backstories, sort of. And uh, we found out that Panda is a puppet, sort of. He's the ultimate puppet. Yep. He's a cursed object that was created by the principal, but, you know, he was a success because he's got a conscience. Mm -hmm. He's got three cores. Uh, he can, you know, move them around. You know, that that was pretty cool. His <laughs> first core is the panda, but he's got also a sister and a brother core, with which that last one is a gorilla one. And so, the last one we don't know yet. Yeah, the sister we don't know, but still. He went against Mekamaru, who is a puppet, controlled by a sorcerer who, you know, he was born with uh, issues and, and illnesses and he can't go out in the sun and he has no, no legs, legs or no anything. Arms, yeah. yeah. Basically he's uh, his his body is destroyed and his only way of, of existing outside of there is through the puppet, but he wasn't dealing with that very well. Nope. So Panda who is basically accepting who he is and you know he dealt with, with what he is and, and what he can do in a great way. He kind of punched his way through <laughs> Mikamaru's, you know, uh, idea of, of you know what it means to be alive and he taught him some stuff yeah. We defeated him. That was cool. And uh, we might have made a friend <laughs> I like that. So now we're joining the others as they also do their fight I wonder if we're gonna focus on one fight today as well I would I kind of like that because we get to learn about every student and that's pretty cool <laughs> but also, uh, Itadori is learning how to fully use is yes. a curse energy you know? instead of focusing it on his fists every time which is what might create the delay every time he punches someone or something and so... Toto, is, Toto is loving it yeah I don't think we're gonna focus on them though this episode we might focus more on on the other students so I'm excited because that means we see more techniques and more backstories yeah I'm so... all for it Let's jump in this episode and see what they have in store for us. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when these episodes come out and check out our Patreon for the full reactions. Okay, let's watch it, guys. So we're gonna focus on them then. Oh, blue hair girl and Maki. Yep. <laughs> because she can't see curses, I think she had to overcompensate. Yeah. I think I heard a few cracks. <laughs> but that's First the thing, mistake. people probably don't send her, you know, up the ladder because she can't see curses. They see this as, probably, you know, yeah. yeah. She's crazy strong. <laughs> I really like her fighting style too, though. Okay. All of them have tricks. But that's what makes this fun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Create that opening. <laughs> oh, she's really cool. <laughs> she's really good. It's over. It's over. I do have faith that she's gonna do something cool, but... Can anyone promote her or something? She's so good. But like you said, they probably won't. They want to push her down because they're fucking butt hurt. Oh. 
女はね実力があっても可愛くなければなめられる当然可愛くっても実力がなければなめられる It's kind of true though in every aspect of life not just jujitsu 女の実力を求められるのは実力じゃないの That sucks 完璧なのそしてマイちゃんはそれ以上の理不尽と戦ってるの From the clan I guess これ以上出力を上げれば殺しかねないいやそれは言い訳だ攻めきれない一番の理由犬巻君呪言は愛呪霊に特化した術式なんださっきも言ったが術師にとっては来ると分かっていればそこまで But they don't know where he is or what he's doing 逆に言えば来るか来ないか分からないと永遠と気を散らされる He's not around but he's scaring them <laughs> いてもいなくても厄介I don't want to go against him, that's for sure. Yeah, but her solution is to throw that anger at her sister. That's not any better. Mm. Thank you! <laughs> it's the attitude she, she shows. Exactly. True. What they've been through, you know? Everyone has their fair deal of, of issues. She's also really badass. Look at that shit! <laughs> she created a field, sort of. We have barely seen what Nobara is capable of. We've barely seen anything from her. Hey! Oh! oh. You're done, girl. Oof. You are so done right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you go. This is how everyone should be. Pretty and strong. Yep. No, thinking, you know, <laughs> that of themselves. No, I know. <laughs> that still hurts. Oh. Imagine if that if that had been the real thing, though. Oh. Oh shit. In the head. Ouch. Like, Nobara's not dead, for no, sure, she's not dead, but that still hurts. How much damage did she take? But then we might have the the one-on-one -on -one we were expecting. Unless she's passed out. Oh, she's, she's done. Sister against sister. That's another one on one I kind of wish we yeah. They won't allow her to go further. Because she's different. They, she doesn't have one of the, of the, you know, powers of the family, the techniques of the family, so... That would be difficult. <laughs> 
I'm not sure that affects uh, Megumi at all, though, but he's, he's, he should technically be part of the same clan. Yeah. But maybe well, he's not in the main Ooh. branch, though. He might not be in the same branch, so that, that maybe lessens how affected he is. Yeah. They do have it rough, but I'm supporting the one that, you know, kicking ass by being a good person. It is creepy. <laughs> and she couldn't see them when she was a kid. And you know what that who that reminds me of? What? Rin and Yukio from Blue yeah. Exorcist. Oh, I kind of wish that happened. <laughs> she deserves it. She was kind of a bystander. Like she, she suffered consequences because of her sister's choices. But again, that doesn't justify your attitude. Mm. It never does. Nice, <laughs> oh, really nice. <laughs> Um, I was thinking, okay, she's making bullets. And she's using it on her sister. Catch swords before, but bullet? a bullet? <laughs> How? They're gonna fucking twist us about this. I feel a bit bad. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying that your attitude sucked. Mm. But then she did leave her. And because of how she left too, she kind of pushed her in that path. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. They did it. They did it again. They kind of changed our minds, I think, about a character. Well, yes, and because like <laughs> you said, of. it is true that no matter what you went through, it doesn't excuse the fact for what you how you're acting towards yeah. someone else. So. It's a defense mechanism though. And even if someone's attitude can't be accepted, it can definitely be justified. Well, understood. Explain, explain. Explained. Explained. There you go. So I know, you know, some people would say if 
you'll see people be, be like, oh, I went through trauma when I was a kid, so I don't want to be a parent, not so I won't put my children to that, through that same trauma. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. Uh, and other people would be saying, well, this is your choice whether or not you, you, you make that environment for your children, you know? It's not because you've been through some shit that you have to keep this going. Sometimes it's harder for others than it is for, for you know, for some, but in this case, the general anger and the attitude came from unresolved feelings with her sister that she never managed to, you know, describe to her or, you know, deal with because her sister was gone. So it doesn't help. I will tackle this discussion with a grain of salt because, <laughs> yeah. like I said, whether or not you've been through some shit, it doesn't justify being mean to others. And this is definitely the feeling I got from her when she showed up in the first episode. They were there. She was being mean. And I'm, you know, being mean to your sister is one thing. She was mean to Nobara as well. <laughs> and she was talking shit to them. Yeah. So I know Todo also kind of did the same, but he's got his, his twist and now he's best friends with Itadori. So it's, a, it's another situation. Todo is a special case. So yeah. it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, but I mean, Todo's approach was always more like, I want to test you out. You know, I want to see if you're strong enough to compete. That's something else. It's 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 about strength. But with Mary, it's about attitude. attitude. Was, I want to step on you. It's about attitude, yeah. right? So, I totally understand where she comes from because we're sisters. And if you oh, didn't know, if you we didn't are? know, a lot of people are asking constantly. <laughs> we are sisters, and we came from a family where I'm the oldest, and we came from a family where you know our brother had it easy, but we both constantly were pushed to have the best grades, you know, do a lot of sports every year, do a lot of, uh, I had piano, piano lessons and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we were constantly, we, we constantly had to be overachievers yeah. and it wasn't just, you know, overachieve our own expectations. It was our parents' expectations and each other as well. We kind of were pitted against each other a little bit. It was about, you know, oh, your sister got good grades on, on that exam, so you're expected to have good grades. Do better than she did. I literally was told that. Like, when I when I got to... I, I think I told this story before, but never on this show, so I'll say it here. Uh, when I graduated high school, I was lucky enough to score the highest at an exam in English and in French, so I got a plaque that said so. And uh, my mom was really proud, but then she turned to my sister and she was like... Now you know what you have to beat next year. That, you know, that really angered me. And I don't know how you felt about this, but... Well, I, I didn't bother to You didn't bother think but about that, it, but... That yeah. hurt me. And I, I would... I, okay, let's... That didn't bother you, but I can see how that could have bothered you. No, like, no. you're always expected to do better than the ones that came before you. And in my case, whatever I do... My, the people, you know, it, it's never going to really matter because the ones that come after me mm -hmm. will be expected to do better, and you know? Technically, we're not that far from age difference. And they're twins, like, so... Like, they're twins. We got, like, uh, 16 months apart yeah. from uh, our birth and mine. And we technically kind of like pretty much the same thing, or most of the same thing. And uh, if for you, people were expecting me to beat your scores at everything, they were uh, diminishing, uh, diminishing? Uh, putting less importance yeah, on... Um, on your worth. Yeah. And for me, they were uh, putting less worth on my uh, chosen life and what I liked. Because the only thing yeah. that I was copying what you like, and I was basically I was doing what you want me to yeah. do. Being like, the first, my own opinion, what I, I wanted to do didn't matter because you were forcing me to do the same. I wasn't forcing you to do shit. No, I actually <laughs> used to be mad when you would copy me and do the same shit. <laughs> but in this case, it's not the same though. Yeah. What I talked about is what's happening here. You know, the, the idea that they're sisters, and one of them is doing some stuff and putting, you know, she's got expectations on her shoulders and, and stuff. And the other, by proxy, is being asked to, to do, the same. do the same. And it's, it, they created, like, the, that, that environment created a competition between the two. And, you know, if uh, Maki is the eldest one, right? Yep. Maki never really saw this. She, she, I think she kind of put her sister in the category of, you're like the clan, you know, you see me as worthless 
and you you want to push me in that corner and stuff and I see why she would think that because her sister treated her like this she told her you know you're worth shit you can't see curses and she insulted her with that thing like that's exactly how she talked to her before mm -hmm. so of course she would see her you know as the same as the clan she you want to put me in that box because I can't see curses what happened after that was she got that feeling of I got to push through I got to prove to them that despite the fact I'm born with less I can do more so it's for her it became a a, a drive whereas for a sister my she she also had it rough because okay if if maki was born with no techniques no way of seeing curses either for the she rest, got physical she strength yeah. yeah whereas my got a technique but the rest is every everything else is kind of weak you know so she's still at the bottom of the chain but and, but then she can see that maki can surpass the others it's just that she's not respected because she doesn't have a technique you know, but she sees her sister being strong, whereas she's at the bottom. And Maki has that drive, whereas she doesn't, because she never wanted to be a sorcerer. Her sister left, and she was forced to do the same as her sister, becoming a sorcerer, becoming the best and stuff, because yeah. of what she did. So, the resentment of, you know, if you were just a servant and stuff, people would treat you as a servant. You would do a few, a few chores, like she said, and be done with it. But now, she's got the resentment of having to follow the expectations follow the rules for and try to do her best when she knows or at least she she says that she can do more but they're asking her for more i don't know if she she can you know become stronger if her technique can be well, better to be to be honest with you i do think that if she didn't put so much energy on resenting her on resenting her sister for yeah. her troubles and her and her suffering she could be better she could be way more stronger if she had that same drive yeah. but if at this core, if at her core she doesn't even want to be a sorcerer, there's That's no the point. Problem, then. But then she's stuck in the confines of the clan, and it looks like they have rules that are terrible, mm -hmm. and like they're so stuck up but on that. You know what? The thing is, if both of them were working together, they could be probably uh, invincible. No, if they were... <laughs> no, not invincible. Don't but go there. No, 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 no. But they I would mean, be better together for they sure. They would be better together for sure. But yeah. like, one of them left the clan, and the other didn't. So I mean. What does she do? You leave the clan as well? Probably, maybe, maybe. But even leaving the clan doesn't stop them from, you know... Arresting them? Uh, well, yeah. Basically, because of them, she can't keep going. Like, she can go She can go up the ladder and stuff. This so. is so bullshit, guys. Which is why I kind of wish that she goes back and, and proves to them <laughs> that she can kick ass. Because she definitely can. She's really strong. <laughs> I think it's fucking cool. Like, her technique is nothing. It's just brute strength. Mm -hmm. But she is managing... That was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I mean, she did talk to her sister a little bit this episode. I think she, they really need to sit down and, and tell everything, you yeah. know, because uh, Mai felt abandoned by Maki and she, I, I think she never said that to her. So stop being, you know, butthurt over what happened because I think, I don't think Maki ever wanted to put her in that position. Like she said it herself, it's not about her. Yeah. But she did leave her behind. You know, she was her sister and she left her behind. Yeah, they need to talk it through. But then, like, she, I, I, cannot, I cannot also understand, you know, you don't... It, it's like they were using her sister to keep her here as a servant. But you cannot, you know, abandon the idea of a better life just because they're saying, you know, if you are, you know, if you're leaving and you're saying that you want to become the leader of the clan, we're going we're gonna to put you through what a leader should go through, but your sister as well. And, and like maybe they were expecting you to be like, oh fuck, yeah, no, my sister won't go through that shit. I won't leave. And she's still. There. But her, yeah, you know, I, I, she'd rather do that and be like, no, hopefully my sister can disconnect from my future and do her own thing. Well, when you, when you say it like that, it's kind of a little bit selfish of her to do it. Uh, this. Uh, well, she as, as far as you know, this, this part of her sister. And she feelings. literally said, she literally said. You became a sorcerer too. She didn't know her sister didn't want to be a sorcerer. She had no idea what they put her through. Yeah. She wasn't there. She probably for that. But she I didn't can't have blame her. Right? I can't blame her for wanting a better life though. What's the alternative? Stay mm. a servant. Mm. So in my opinion, like maybe what they could have done was talk it through together and leave together. Uh, maybe it's still a possibility. I don't know. 
uh, hopefully they can settle this because yes, it would be nice if they managed to make peace. This episode really made me, you know, appreciate <laughs> both characters. Yeah. And, uh, well, if I'd really hated my before, now at least I can understand her. Well, so. once you know the backstory, everything is... Well, well, not everything, but most of it is fine. But the best villains are the ones we can understand, you know? Yeah, so, in this case, uh, she's not a villain, but she's still an enemy in this episode, so there, there you go. She's an underdog. Uh... What about Nobara's fight against uh, what Momo? That's that's her name. I'm, yeah, a bit. I I uh, Nishimiya, Momo. Yeah. Momo. Nishimiya Momo. Yep. So I I feel a bit pissed. I'm a bit pissed that <laughs> it got interrupted because she was winning. <laughs> she got some kick-ass moves and she got some kick-ass moves and and it was nice to see her uh, lash out a little bit. I I kind of want to see more. I love her techniques. I think it's original and uh, she has a huge attitude, but it fits. You know. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's just, it's just really cool. And I think she had a point, you know, it's exactly what we said well, about being, having a, a terrible past, having trauma and stuff doesn't justify being an asshole to others. You know, you don't know. And, and it's kind of like what we talked about last episode. M Mikamaru was kind of, uh, lashing out because of his past, but like, you don't know what others have been through. It's not because they are okay with who they are that they haven't been through some shit. Like, and Nobara literally has a past with this when it comes to the girl that she used to look up to. And that girl, you know, because of where she, of what she was and, and who, she, and you know, who she was and where she came from, people judged her yeah. because she was different. And she got to witness that. And she decided to be different. She decided to leave him. Or even Italori. Basically, or uh, fucked up accident, put him, uh, transform into uh, Sukuna's vessel, but he's still that goofy teenager but that everybody likes. The way they talk about this, it's kind of like, oh, we know my, and we know what she's been through. So they're looking at the others and they're like, oh, you're all happy with your lives right now. So we're going to judge you because you don't understand anything that she's been through. And I'm like, you don't know them. We're not happier. We're just better at hiding it. Or they, they make peace with what they've been through, you know? Yeah. It, everyone has a story. Everyone has a past. Some of them worse than others, granted. But others also have it, you know, really bad. And they just grew up faster or they matured faster or they dealt with it faster. Mm -hmm. That doesn't justify being an asshole to people you don't know. No. And like... There's a reason why we didn't like Mai in the beginning. She showed up and was an asshole. Uh, true. There uh, you go. <laughs> what do you think about the fact uh, that Momo uh, said that for men and women... Uh, if, it's true. If you're skilled but not pretty, people will look down on you. But if you're pretty and not skilled, people will still look down on you. If you're pretty but not skilled, uh, it's kind of... Uh, we see that in TV shows a lot. Uh, you'll be... a Named, you know, the, the idiot, distress, yeah. you know, the damsel in distress that needs saving or the the stupid blonde girl, you know, the, the, there's a reason why there's a stereotype about this. Yeah. And uh, I mean, men also face their own share of stereotypes mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. But in this case, they talked about women. So we'll focus on, on women. But uh, and a strong woman, uh, it's kind of like we we turned them into a, a little bit more feminine versions of men in order to save toxic masculinity. You know, to keep it safe. Because it's, you know, acknowledging that a woman can be both feminine and, and strong okay. is kind of like saying that, you know, men can be more feminine and strong. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like spitting on that toxic masculinity. Yeah. So it's better to portray strong women as unattractive and, you know, keep the weak women as attractive because that's what we want. You know, that's, that's what we want. That's not what we <laughs> want, but that's what kind of society that's that's kind of like what society teaches us we want yeah you know men strong uh strong men that you know are not that intelligent emotionally or otherwise and, and pretty and women are supposed pretty to be fragile weak women so something that you must protect yeah yeah it's uh, i'm not saying it's the same for everyone it's the same everywhere or it's the same you know uh today necessarily as it used to be mm -hmm. but the way they described it in the sorcerer universe is kind of like that, and I'm not even surprised actually. Well, and makes sense to me. Well, if you think about it, in anime world, generally the pretty girl won't be that strong. That's not true. Well, most depends of, on the anime. Depends on the anime, but most of the time, look at Naruto. She's the main she, characters are strong and pretty. 
Yeah. The, the main female But character. compared to the male characters, that's they're not, not that strong. That's not the same. It's mm. not because, you know, women are less Still. strong. It's because Masashi Kishimoto doesn't know how to write women. <laughs> And it's not necessarily true, Tsunade. She still got defeated by Orochimaru and Jiraiya. And yes, Technically. for sure, but that she had her own share of troubles, but men have also been defeated before. I he just know. doesn't know how to write women correctly, <laughs> but he's created strong women. I know. The point was to create strong women, and they're still attractive. Mm. Anyway, it's not the same show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> still. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was interesting to see everyone's point of view. I love when they do that, you know, change our minds about characters because I, I remember when Toto and Mai got introduced, uh, we were, you know, reading what we saw in the episode and making our minds about these characters a little bit. And mm -hmm. I think someone got uh, frustrated in the comments about us. Uh, uh, it wasn't frustration, sorry, because, uh, it was just, you know, you guys completely misunderstood the character. And I'm like, well, they just got introduced. Like, what do you want us to think? <laughs> it's the first time we see them. Uh, but now, you know, we're learning more about them. So our minds and our, our op opinions of them are going to change. And in this case, they ch it changed a lot. <laughs> Doesn't justify, but it changed. Yeah. There you go. All right. And I love the fighting styles. So I really love the sword one, but uh, unfortunately, we didn't go... I mean, it's not like she had a chance to fight back. <laughs> no, because when you got skill opponents that knows how to be versatile in, the t in their techniques... Well, Maki had to teach herself how to face curse users. Mm -hmm. users so she can't just go into a battle without an, an, an a, a analytic mind, sorry. Because but, otherwise she'll lose. But not even just herself. With uh, Nobara too, she's using different... Uh, techniques with our curse. She's thinking ahead. Yeah. Yeah, but, but well, you have that technique, so you're gonna try to use it as best as you can. But with Maki, she fought two opponents in this episode, and in, in both cases, she adapted really well. And you know, like, she didn't know about um, her sister's curse technique, but like, she still caught that bullet barehanded. I don't know how she did it. I don't know how she did it. <laughs> it might just be a strength, you know, kind of like Superman would be like, Ding! just a reflex. <laughs> But uh, reflexes, I know it reflexes and strength, yeah. but uh, that came from pre preparing yourself to take on a cursed user. Yeah. That was so badass, by the way. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna end this here for today and move on to the next episode. Uh, we're almost through the first season. Almost. Yes, and then there's gonna be, I know there's a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, we might do it on YouTube. We should. and Because, uh, I mean, it is canon, but I talked about this in Madoka Magica as well. If we have time. We should make time, then. We did it for Demon Slayer, but that was literally part of the story. Like, that was... We needed that to f keep going with season two. So that is part of the story, guys. We what? will watch it then. It is sort of part of the story. I think it's going to be the what happened last year. We you should, know? We should watch but it. But I, I, we'll see if we have time, but hopefully we do. And, uh, yeah... I mean, after that, we'll just wait for season two. Okay. I'll, I'm, I'm going to be so excited. <laughs> I, mean, I am already excited, but yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next episode right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't, the next one will be on YouTube next week, guys. So we're going to see you then. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>